Okay, this video is part two of the test review. Um, the material in this video is on the first quiz, or is not on the first quiz, but is on the unit test. So this is a continuation of the test review, and that's why I have broken the test review into two parts. Also, the first part was pretty long to begin with. <clears throat> so, nucleic acids um, include both DNA and RNA, and oftentimes students will remember what DNA and RNA are, but forget that they are nucleic acids, and that is what the N and the A stand for in DNA and RNA. So you have ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acid. And if you think about it, you know they're acids, but you can also tell where they're found in a cell, because if you see nucleic and you really think about it, you ought to think, oh, wait, those are probably acids that are found in the nucleus, and you would be right. So what is the monomer of nucleic acids? Nucleotides. Now be really careful because sometimes students get amino acids confused and they think, oh, nucleic acids are made of amino acids because they both end in acids. I don't know why nobody ever thinks that they're made of fatty acids, maybe because the word fatty it, you know, immediately makes you think of lipids, but think nucleotides are found in the nucleus, just like nucleic acids are found in the nucleus. So this is a nucleotide, and it has three parts. This part is deoxyribose, it is a sugar. Sometimes it's ribose if you have RNA. This is our phosphate group, and this is our nitrogen base. Some people call it a nitrogen base, other people call it a nitrogenous base, but it is a base that clearly has a lot of nitrogen atoms in it, hence the term nitrogen base. There are five different nitrogen bases, but the sugar and the phosphate are pretty are identical in all DNA. And the different nucleotides are the same in DNA, it's just the sequence of nucleotides that vary. So there are three differences between DNA and RNA. DNA has deoxyribose and RNA has ribose. Ribose has um, one more oxygen atom in it than deoxyribose because D means removing, so there's one less oxygen. And one thing that's kind of interesting about deoxyribose is that it has a different ratio of hydrogen and oxygen. Normally you have a two to one ratio, deoxyribose is the exception to that rule. DNA is double-stranded and it's in the shape of a helix, so that's spiral shape. And RNA is single-stranded. And DNA has adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, so A, T, G, and C, and RNA has A, U, G, and C, so adenine uracil instead of thymine, so RNA has no thymine. If you see a DNA, or if you see a nucleic acid and it has thymine in it, you know it must be DNA. If you see something that is single-stranded, you might be tempted to think any single-stranded diagram is showing you RNA, but it might just be showing you one half of DNA when it's open to be copied. So you're gonna see a lot of different diagrams, but look for the presence or absence of thymine versus uracil. So what parts of the nucleotide make up the backbone of a DNA molecule? It is both the sugar and the phosphates. There is an alternating sequence of sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate that make up the backbones. And this part, the sugar phosphate backbone, is structural in nature, but not informational. There is no information found in the sugar and phosphates, and in fact, they're identical in all DNA molecules. <clears throat> the parts of a nucleotide that make up the rungs of the twisted ladder, so the part where your feet and hands would go if you were climbing the ladder, which we call the rungs, are the nitrogen bases. And they're actually nitrogen base pairs. The name of the twisted ladder shape is a double helix. And which type of nucleic acid can be inherited or passed down from one generation to the next? That is DNA. We do not pass RNA down from generation to generation, but DNA is used to make RNA within the cell, so it's the instructions to make RNA. So if we look at the molecule on the left, we know that is double helix, it's two strands, so that's DNA, and the one on the right is single-stranded, so it's probably RNA. Uh, before I move on, um, adenine and thymine always go together in a DNA molecule, and guanine and cytosine always go together. The great thing about DNA, the thing that makes it very easy to copy, 
so that you can get one cell ready to make new DNA and divide for a new cell is the fact that it is double-stranded. So each new strand, or each DNA molecule can open up into two separate strands, and each of the original strands can be a template for a new strand. And the fact that adenine and um, thymine always go together and guanine and cytosine always go together um, in that complementary nature of DNA makes it very easy to copy. So when this opens up, there are nucleotides floating around and every time there's a thymine on the template strand, an adenine will come in and every time there's a cytosine, a guanine will come in and then you can end up with two new identical DNA strands. Another thing worth noting about DNA, it is the sequence of nitrogen bases and nucleotides that actually will determine the order of the amino acids in the protein. So DNA can be thought of as the recipes for all of our proteins. We are going to have an entire unit second semester on how the cell uses the information in DNA to make RNA and then eventually to make proteins. That's coming up. So now let's talk about enzymes. So enzymes are special proteins. Enzymes also are made of amino acids. So the building block of all proteins are amino acids. And since enzymes are proteins, they're made of amino acids too. So the pH range of substances, if they are basic or acidic, so anything less than seven is an acid and anything with a pH greater than seven is a base. And we care about that because enzymes all have an optimum pH that they work at. So enzymes like found in the stomach have an optimum pH that's pretty acidic because you probably are aware that your stomach is acidic. Um, and um, enzymes that work in your um, intestines is a little bit more basic than that. So they have a different optimum pH. So to what class of organic compounds do enzymes belong? They're proteins and the building block or monomer of enzymes must be amino acids. So can enzymes be reused? Yes, that is the wonderful thing about enzymes is that the cells only need to make small amounts of the enzyme because it can be reused over and over and over again. Not indefinitely, but for a really long time. Can an enzyme be used on more than one type of substrate? No. Enzymes are very specific for one molecule that they can act on, and that is called its substrate. Enzymes can be used on more than one molecule of the same type of substrate. So that gets at the fact that it can be reused. Are enzymes permanently changed by reaction? No, they're catalysts. So that's why they can be reused because they're not changed. So the shape of an enzyme determines its function. If you change the shape of an enzyme, it will not function as, as well. And if you change it permanently, um, then you, you will have denatured the enzyme and it will never function again. So an enzyme substrate complex is the name for the joining of the enzyme and the substrate when they're together. And enzymes are named after the substrate that they work upon and then they have an ACE ending. Some of the um, enzymes that were discovered really early on don't follow this naming pattern, but any of the more modern enzymes that have been more recently discovered are named after their substrate and end in ACE. So for example, maltase works on maltose. Be careful because the ACE ending tells you you've got an enzyme, which is a protein, and the OSE ending tells you you have a carbohydrate. It's only one letter different, so it's pretty easy to confuse that. So enzymes at extremely cold temperatures do not denature, but they don't work as well because molecules are moving much more slowly and are less likely to collide and react with each other. So the enzyme and substrate meet less often. Can you reverse this? Absolutely, if you warm up the solution a moderate amount, the chemical reaction will speed up because the molecules are moving um, more quickly and with more energy and colliding with more force, and so you're gonna get more reactions per, per minute. Now, it doesn't work if you heat them up too much. So at extremely high temperatures, the enzymes denature and they change shape. Um, denaturation is basically a permanent change in shape, and it cannot be reversed. And Denaturation can happen at high temperatures, but not at cold temperatures. It can also happen at extremes of pH if the um, enzyme is in a um, really strong acid or a really strong base. So <clears throat> with moderate increases in temperature, you have an increase in the speed of chemical reactions, um, but not at a very large increase in temperature. So now, this is a great um, visual that kind of compares and contrasts all of our um, different classes of organic compounds. So 
The monomer of carbohydrates would be monosaccharides. If you have two of them joined together, you have disaccharide. Three or more would be a polysaccharide. And to go from monosaccharide to disaccharide, you have dehydration synthesis and more dehydration synthesis to get to polysaccharides. The elements present are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And there's a two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. And it is primarily for energy. Um, and lipids don't really have monomers. They do have building blocks because you don't have a long repeating chain. So you don't technically have monomers and polymers here, but you do have building blocks and that would be glycerol and three fatty acids. And if you have three fatty acids and a glycerol, you have a triglyceride. And you also have phosphorus in addition to carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in your lipids. Think about your phospholipids. And they're used for energy storage and for hormones and phospholipids are the major component of cell membranes. If we are talking about proteins now, the monomer is amino acids. Two of them together would be a dipeptide. Many of them together would be a polypeptide, which would fold into its 3D protein shape. And the key for proteins, the thing that's kind of unique about them is that they have, or at least compared to carbohydrates and lipids, it has nitrogen in it. So you should be looking for that NH2, that amino group. Um, so proteins are used for cell structure, muscles, cartilage, and bone. Um, but in addition, they're also enzymes. So enzymes have the same building blocks, same monomer, dimer, and polymer, because enzymes are proteins, they're just a protein with a very specific function. So they're gonna have the same elements found in proteins. And then they are biological catalysts and they speed up the chemical reactions in your body by lowering, lowering the activation energy, which is the amount of energy needed to get a reaction going. Nucleic acids have a monomer of a nucleotide. There really is no dimer. Um, I guess you could say base pair, but you don't really see them floating around in pairs typically. And our two types of nucleic acids are DNA and RNA deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. So don't forget that DNA and RNA are nucleic acids and that nucleotides are the monomers, not amino acids. And they have nitrogen, like the nitrogen bases, and they also have phosphorus from the phosphate group in the sugar phosphate backbone. And this stores information. It's genetic information passed down from generation to generation and it's used for protein synthesis. And we will get into the details of DNA and RNA and proteins in the second semester. So now I'm gonna close this PowerPoint and open my structures review PowerPoint and go back to where we were, this one. So what is this molecule? That is a nucleotide. It is a monomer of nucleic acids. Now both DNA and RNA are made of nucleotides and they look very similar. The sugar would be a little different and one of the bases is a little bit different, but their basic monomer is the same. So that would be deoxyribose for DNA or ribose if you had RNA. That is our phosphate group and that is our nitrogen base that comes in at five different shapes. We have adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So um, <clears throat> the one on the left is DNA. The molecule on the right is RNA. The shape of DNA is called a double helix. RNA is single-stranded in comparison. And the backbone of the DNA, the outside, or that's around the outside here is the alternating sugar and phosphate that we refer to as the sugar phosphate backbone. That's not the information part of DNA. The information part of DNA is the order of nitrogen bases that are here in the middle. Now this diagram shows you um, the enzyme action. So this molecule right here, that's the molecule that the enzyme works on and this is the enzyme. Now, how can I tell which is the substrate and which is the enzyme? If you look at the beginning to the end, the substrate changes, enzymes don't change. Um, that's the hallmark of enzymes. They're catalysts, so they're not changed by the chemical reaction. So in any diagram, if you're looking at substrates and enzymes, and they're all going to be different shapes depending upon which artist draws them, but if you want to figure out which is the enzyme, you look at the part of the diagram that stays the same. 
throughout. So that is a special protein called an enzyme. That is the active site, the shape that fits the substrate is called the active site of the enzyme. That is the substrate. And in this case, it's breaking a dimer into two monomers. This is the enzyme substrate complex. And here are our new products. Some people, I mean, this is referred to as the enzyme product complex, but it's a, not a very common term. We talk a lot more about enzyme substrate complexes. So enzymes can be reused. So more of the substrate could bind with the active site and be broken apart. Um, oh, in addition, sometimes enzyme actually, enzymes put molecules together. So it's not always breaking things down. Um, but again, the products, the substrates are what change. Enzyme stays the same. And this enzyme can be reused. 